Hey, Greg, how's it going? Good, Mike. How are you? Oh, uh, my vacation got canceled. <laughs> A lot of people's vacations got canceled, didn't they? <laughs> mm-hmm. Holy mackerel. So it's, suffice to say, Scott, what's the, the latest from the CDC is that everything shut down, basically. Anything that does that involves more than fifty people, yeah. And, and did you talk to Spencer about this, Greg? I did. I had a conversation with him yesterday. This is today's Monday, March what? Sixteenth. March sixteenth. Yeah. So yesterday and Sunday, had a discussion about it. We mentioned that uh, you know, and what you guys talked about when you did the announcement was it last week. You said we're waiting for a proper official or whoever, somebody to actually step in and say, "Here's what should be done." And uh, up until that CDC announcement, we didn't really have anything. There were for, it started at 250 people or more, which the nailed convention isn't. But then now, as of yesterday, they said 50 people or more do not have any events or conventions or um, gatherings, whatever they want to call it. Well, that, you know, so, that was Spencer's position, from, Spencer's position from the beginning, right? Was, you know, um, if the CDC or the Mississippi Department of the Mississippi State Department of Health or someone like that tells us to cancel, we cancel. And uh, yep. I always thought that was wise and they've told us to cancel so or, or told us to postpone or, you know, whatever, push the date or whatever it is that's happening. So it's it's postponed. I think that's good leadership by Spencer. And I thank him for, for having it and showing it at this point. So the official announcement is at the nailed convention that was planned for April 19th through the 23rd and Biloxi, Mississippi has been postponed. We don't uh, have we don't have the next dates. We're working on that. We've we've had a lot of talks about this over the last few weeks for sure, and um, mm. we'll keep on it. But we don't have you know an update yet, other than that it's postponed. Mm -hmm. This marks an epoch, right here. Why is that? Well, this is like a nine eleven event. Like the like thing, it? be, it'll be it's it's a watershed event. Um, it's a day yeah. the music died whatever you want to call it, right? Um, mm -hmm. And everything is going to be different past this. Um, I don't know what, how, um, you know, but I mean, it, you know, there's going to be a period of transition in that, but people will look back at this time and they'll say something like, that was the end of international travel. Or, that was the end of like, um, you know, freedom of movement around the globe, basically. Or that was the end of... Um, Western countries and most countries recognizing each other's human rights for their citizens or something like that. It's going to be a major change. And, really? um, yeah, I think so. I, it, these things are epochs, dude. It marks an epoch. When, 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 um, when people are pushed into the situations like this, they, the, there has to be change afterward because the consequences are so devastating and the consequences are going to be devastating. Uh, I think what's going to happen for sure is everybody's going to wash your hands a lot more and the handshake's going to go away. I think those two things will happen. That's not necessarily a significant thing, but it's something that will change the way you do, uh, people act for sure. Maybe. I don't know about travel I yet, also, but, yeah. yeah, I think, I, I don't know. I mean, I, my, my thing is that it, I think it's an epoch. Um, there's the mm -hmm. post 9 11 epoch, which was. Which, which was from, you know, September 11, 2001 to basically the time we're in right now. And I think there's going to be the post-COVID-19 epoch, which is going to be like really looking at um, the mixing of international communities with suspicion and whether or not, you know, um, whether or not we want to mix our populations with each other, and whether or not it's safe. And um, because we just assumed it was in the past. And now we're knowing that, you know, um, it's not. And I think it's also the, the time, I think it's a, one of the good things that are going to come out of this, this is my opinion, is that people are going to look at China and they're going to say, like, this President Xi guy is taking credit for, you know, handling the virus they created better than everybody else. This guy is no different than Rocket Man. You know, who are, you know, Rocket Man, right? Kim Jong-un. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like people, were, before this crisis, people were looking at this guy with respect and admiration and all that sort of stuff. And when the COVID-19 crisis came out, he quickly wrote a book or published uh, 
a book about how great his leadership was during the crisis. And then all of a sudden, all those books disappeared in China. Oh, really? And then a new, a new book re- appeared or something. Yeah. Hmm. So I, I think it's time to start looking at these authoritarian, like you're taking credit for a disease your country created and, and you export light bulbs and diseases <laughs> to the world. Thanks, man. And now you're taking credit no. for how you handled your own disease. How about sorry? Interesting. Yeah. How about sorry? Or how about, you know, we're going to change the, the, uh, the, the regulations of wet markets. How about that? Don't have a wet market. Yeah. Or how about like no eating ferret badgers? Wow. Whatever the heck it is. Bats. Whatever it is. Or, you know, how about that leadership? The the John Updike moment? Yeah. I don't know who John, Greg doesn't know who John Updike is. He's like an American uh, (laughs) literature guy. So he, so he wrote the jungle, which was about how bad it is to work in a factory in Victorian England. And what everyone learned from that book is that the way we were making sausages was horrifying. And then there were yeah, health still, codes. Still is. Yeah. But now I we're, mean, you but know now what? there's health codes about how horrifying we can be. Well, how you are know, they going to regulate health on, on people? That's what I'm interested. Like, okay. that's what this is going to turn into, right? Doing this because of this, there's going to be more regulations on health codes, health screenings. Are you going to have to have? A certain rating before you're allowed to travel, or are you going to have to go through extra processes? Is that what you think oh, is yeah, going to happen here, Mike? You're going to have to take off your shoes, your belt, and submit to at least a temperature check at uh, at all borders. Really? Maybe they'll, be, maybe they'll create like a viral passport. I think like viral. I think, I think, I think like a viral visas passport are going to get a tat. I think certain visas might see you know some extra information. Who knows? No. I mean. Uh, who knows? Uh, it's going to be it's going to be wild times, but um, yeah, this is definitely marks an epoch, and that epoch is within relation to who can go where and when, and for how long. And uh, yeah. you know, I mean, I don't know if you've been following the news in the European Union um, no. about the uh, so Turkey. Um, so the European Union was basically paying Turkey to keep immigrants, uh, refugees, not immigrants. Sorry. Uh, to keep them in their migrants. country. Yeah, to yeah. keep them in Turkey rather than letting them come to Europe. Right, so the, my, these migrants or these refugees from Syria, mostly men between the ages of 18 to say 36. So they don't want to call them refugees because you can't really call a 25-year-old man a refugee. It's like families mm-hmm. and vulnerable people are kind of refugees. They call them migrants. And um, so uh, in the past, there was this welcoming culture. I don't know if you remember welcome culture. In, in Germany and that where they, they said, yeah, you know, come and that poor boy died and he washed up on shore in Turkey or Greece or something and everyone was freaking out. The Greek army is, the Greek navy is sinking um, vessels that carry migrants right now trying to cross from Turkey. Sink them. They're sinking them. They're sinking them. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. And so oh. the mood changed. Okay. And uh, Ursula von der Leyen, who is, I guess, I don't know how you would describe it, the EU's um, Secretary of State or something like that. I don't know what you would call her. Scott, who is Ursula von der Leyen? What's her title? Oh, it's something weird. Uh. Yeah, anyway, so she um, she comes out and she thanks the Greek Navy or the Greek Army for protecting the frontier. Yeah, she's the president of the European Commission. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Well. which is... Yeah, and so she made a statement saying that, um, you know, so the moods can change, buddy, and it can go quickly. And so I think this this whole COVID thing is, is going to mark an epoch of who can go where and when. And people are going to say who their friends are and who they aren't. And then it's going to be, that's going to be the end of it. So we'll see um, uh, what what happens. But I don't know why we're talking about this on the Whatever this is, yeah. light, we, yeah. we get a good lighting nailed postponement podcast. Some sort go. of, I don't know, announcement of navel gazery. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Scott, for getting weird. Yeah. <laughs> John, yeah, no, it's, it's it's definitely an interesting time, and it's unfortunate that it's kind of a you know we talked about it too. It's just like halting a lot of things, a lot of momentum that people have built up. You know, their their businesses, their lives, everything. 
is just like shut it down right now. And now what? Now we just wait and see. That's what's. I'm not sure. I got kids home for a couple of weeks. Everybody does, right? Schools are shut down. I'm still yeah. going to work. I'm going to see what the heck's going on. If yeah. anybody's going to answer the phone do, today, I don't know. <laughs> go do inventory. Yeah, might uh, be the time your, to do that. Uh, collect your receipt. Collect your receivables. Is anybody going to be there to pay their <laughs> the, the bills? Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, that's that's the issue, right? Hold on to your cash. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, these are the kind of things that you have to think about in these times, right? Like, hmm. Right. Hmm. hmm. Call the landlord. Tell them you're not paying your rent this month. Yeah. Say, hey, where, where does it stop, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to be affected by this. For sure. Mm -hmm. right, Including stop? nailed. So, I mean, that, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we've postponed our event. So, uh, yeah. uh, keep your eyes on whatever channel you found this on. We will be announcing new dates as they are available. Um, do we have a refund policy yet, or is it just credit to the next event? Well, we right now the, the plan board is, has to decide that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we have a board doing? call. We have a board call this week at the end of the week, so we'll we'll talk through that stuff. But um, yeah, the plan is a, is a postponement. So we still want to do something. We don't know when yet, and we probably won't for a few weeks. So right now it's kind of in limbo. If everybody can just hold tight, that's what we're asking, and then we'll. Uh, we are working on it. We're thinking about it. We're going to have a plan and get back to everybody. So that's the plan. Hold tight for now. Keep it crisp. Keep it crisp. Thanks for listening.